What's up creators, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're returning to the Edelac series where we break down the styles of famous photographers and filmmakers or creators. Okay, the style that we're going to break down today is Olesia Shatskova. Now this profile has some beautiful edits on portraits and it was suggested by one of you guys in a previous video so if you have any other profiles that you wanted to break down, put it down in the comment sections and I'll check them out. Okay, you know how this works. First of all, we're gonna jump into Instagram and see all the details in her color grading, just break down her style. And then in Lightroom, we're gonna edit a photo with that knowledge and create a preset out of it. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into it. So creators, here we have Olesia's profile on Instagram, Olesia Shatskova, if you wanna go and follow her. And she's a photographer, a portrait photographer based in St. Petersburg, Russia. And her portraits are very beautiful. We can see that it has this nice analog feel to it, but it is shot with Sony cameras. And she's very constant or very consistent in the way she edits them. Now, before we jump into the details on her style, one thing that I have to keep in mind is that all of these images, without exception, are shot with the diffusion filter screwed onto her lens. Now, if you're not familiar with diffusion filters, in essence, it's just a piece of glass with some grain in it that creates some diffraction on the light coming to your sensor. And as a consequence, you have an image which is a lot more soft and you're losing some detail. Now, another consequence that you have is that the highlights have this bloom or glowing effect. As we can see in most of these images, for example, right here, we can see how the skin and the lights have this glowing effect around it. And this is a great way to make your subject, particular female subjects, where their skin tones really glow and pop up a little bit more. Now, there are different intensities of the fusion filter, anything from a 1 8th of intensity, which is what I have screwed onto my lens, all the way to a 1, all the way to a 5 if you want to go to the extremes, but that's just distorting your image. Okay, having said that, let's jump into the details. Now, in her portraits, the first thing that comes to mind is that the skin tones are very orange and yellow and a bit unnatural. You can notice that, obviously, her model right here has very pale, very white skin tones, and he's adding a bit of orange and warm tones in camera calibrations. We have to keep that in mind to add it like we've done it in previous tutorials. Now, another thing that we can see is how the shadows have no information in this image. We don't see any detail in the dark parts of her hair, and also the blacks are very raised. Now, when I say that the blacks are raised, I'm referring that in the tone curve, she's moving the darkest point of her image up, so we don't have any pure blacks, and instead, they're more of a grayish tone, like we can see in this image, where basically we don't have any information in the shadows, but also the blacks, well, basically they're non-existent. Now, another thing that we can notice, apart from the skin tones, is how there's a lot of film grain added into this image. Some digital grain, just making the image a bit more rough, a bit more analog. Now, apart from these changes, she's adding a warm tone into the entire image. That's why her feet has this warm cast in general. Now this is done in color grain. She's basically just adding a hue with a saturation into the entirety of the image just to make it a bit more warm. Now then she has another variant which is this one which is basically a bit more contrasty. We still have those raised blacks, we still have the loss of information in the shadows and that orange skin tone and that film grain but in here we don't see that warm tone in the entire image, that warm cast. So this is a little variant on her style, a bit more contrasty. We can see the style once again in this beautiful series of portraits of this beautiful model and notice how the diffusion filter is acting up in the light in the background in the window and also the hair of the model, how it has this glow effect, very soft and very subtle, it's very beautiful. Now one thing that we have to keep in mind is that most of the colors in these images, in the general in his images, besides the skin tones, are very desaturated. So we're not seeing any crazy changes to the hue of the colors, she's not changing the blues towards the aquas and the greens towards the emeralds, anything like that, but she is desaturating some of the colors, most of them with the exception of the skin tones. So throughout her feed, she is very consistent in the way she edits. Sometimes she adds a little variance. For example, in this series of portraits, we have a bit more of a contrasty style. The blacks are a bit more harsh, but in general, it's the same edit. We can see those faded out blacks, those loss of information in the shadows, orangey skin tones, and then desaturation on the rest of the colors but she is adding that film grain. So in essence, it's just a little variant on her style. So creators, I think I have everything I need to replicate her style. We're gonna create two presets today. This one, which is a bit more neutral and contrasty, and the other one, which is a bit more warm and faded. So let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. But before that, as always, I'm gonna remind you that these two presets, I'm gonna add them to the Edelite -like Preset Pack V2 in case you wanna check it out with all the presets that we create throughout the series and also any presets that we create in the future breaking down styles, I'm gonna to continue to add them to this preset pack. Now, also you can check out the Edelite -like Preset Pack V1 that has 48 presets that we created the year before this one and in the past. And if you wanna skip all my 50 something tutorials about the Edelite -like series, Check it up here, that's a great way you can support me. If not, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. 
Okay, creators, here in Lightroom I have this portrait that we're gonna use to create, first of all, the warm preset. Now, it's not remotely close to the quality of Olesia's portraits, but it will do the job for the color grading. Now, let's start off with the exposure and contrast. Now, temperature, tint, exposure, and general contrast, these four values, I like to leave them at zero and not include them in the preset. As you know, I like to use these values to adjust the preset to different types of photographs. So maybe it was shot in a cool day and you need to raise the temperature. So you know you don't need temperature to be included in the preset. Otherwise, it will change your white balance automatically. Now, if your image maybe was shot underexposed or overexposed, then you can use the exposure and the contrast to compensate those values. So having said that, let's move down to the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now, so the first thing that we're gonna do is bring down the highlights and whites so we have more information in the bright parts of the image and we're preserving the skin tones. Now, opposite to that, we're gonna bring down the shadows just to lose all of that information that we saw in her images in the dark parts. So first of all, highlights, not gonna go to the positives, we're going to go to the negatives, maybe around the minus 30, it's gonna be enough. Then the shadows, not towards the positives, we don't want that high dynamic range in the shadows. The opposite to that, we want to bring it down towards the negatives something like that so we lose detail in the dark parts then the whites once again we're going to bring them down something around these lines around the minus 40 then the blacks i'm just going to pull them down around the minus 32. now i know it's looking horrible it's looking very contrasty and punchy but don't worry we still have to go down to the tone curve that also controls the exposure and contrast of our image so don't worry don't judge the book by its cover just yet now we're gonna move down to the presence tab. Now here we have texture, clarity, and the haze. And these tools, we can use them to add a bit more punch or digital sharpness to our image. For example, if we go with the texture towards the positives and the clarity, we can see how our image is a lot punchy, but it looks horrible on portraits because it raises all the imperfections on the skin. So instead of that, we want to go to the negatives to make the image a lot more soft and try to mimic a bit of the effects created by the diffusion filter. Obviously, we can't replicate them 100%. The best way to do this is just using a diffusion filter on field this image wasn't shot with a diffusion filter now there's another way you can use my tutorial that i did in photoshop link up here if you want to replicate the effects of a pro mist or diffusion filter but that's just an extra step that i'm not willing to take for this tutorial so if you want to check it out it's link up there right now i'm just going to focus on what we can do in lightroom so what i'm going to do is go towards the negatives we want an image which is a lot more soft just around the minus 15 percent for me it's going to be enough for the texture and for the clarity and then the dehaze in this case we can add a bit of that glowy effect towards the negatives as you can see don't want to go to the extreme maybe a minus 20 is going to be just enough now of course you guys can play around with these three values if you want to be a bit more harsh but right now look at the difference we have the skin tones which is a lot more soft we don't see so much of the detail on the imperfections on the skin and also the highlights are a bit more glowy and this is just what we were looking for next we're going to go down to the tone curve now as you know the tone curve controls the exposure and the contrast on our image i already made a tutorial about this tool our camera calibration and color grading you can check it out up here in the cards in if there's space still in the cards you can check them if you want to master this tool so i'm going to create a point in the midtones and also a point in the shadows in the lower part now if you're not very familiar with the tone curve and you don't know precisely where i'm putting each point you can always look at the input and the output that i set over here these are basically the x-axis the coordinates and the y-axis so if i move the black point up you can see how the y-axis or the output is changing meanwhile the input is not moving because that's the zero axis so this is a great way you can just pause the video and paste down the settings and just copy them and write them down if you don't know exactly what you're doing with the tone curve so in this case first of all the shadows in this case i'm going to bring up just a little bit up over the diagonal something around these lines yep something like that and then the blacks i'm going to fade them out not too much we don't want the image to be completely gray but just ever so slightly around my 32% uh, I'm going to go in the white axis. Then midtones I'm going to leave it like that. But whites I'm just going to pull them down ever so slightly. Just making sure we don't have any blown out parts on our image. Now we can see what the tone curve has done. And it's basically fading out those blacks and bringing up the shadows just a bit. So we don't have such a contrasty image. Now right now we're creating the warmer effect, the warmer version of her style. If you wanted to go for the one that is a bit more contrasty, the shadows we're going to pull them down just below the diagonal to make it a bit more punchy but in this case we're going to stick to this one and then we're going to create the variant now we're going to go down to camera calibration and here we want to achieve those orangey skin tones so here we have our skin tones as you can see right now they're a bit more soft compared to the original now we want them to be a bit more orangey 
So first of all, I'm gonna move the blue primary towards the negatives. Now the blue primary is direct opposite to the oranges in the color wheel. So we will affect the blues, but also we will affect a lot of the oranges. So let's see if we go towards the negatives, notice how the skin tones are a lot more orange and a lot more reddish. Obviously we don't want to go to the minus 100, maybe around the minus 25 is gonna be enough around those lines, just adding a bit more of that reddish tone. And then we're gonna combine it with a bit of yellow in the skin adding it with the red primary. Now, red primary towards the negatives adds magenta. Towards the positives, we add some yellow. So obviously we don't want to go this way, otherwise it looks like she has jaundice. So maybe around the plus 15 is gonna be just about enough, not too high, not too low. And now we can deactivate camera calibration to see what is done. This is off, skin tones are natural, normal. On, now they're a bit more orangey and yellow, just what we were looking for. Next, let's move down to HSL. Now, in HSL, we're not gonna do too much. Hue, we're not gonna move any of the colors towards another tint. We are gonna desaturate a lot of the tones. So in Hue, red and orange, we're not gonna move them because, well, as you can see, they control a lot of the skin tones. So we're gonna leave them at zero, but all the other colors, we're just gonna bring them down just a bit. I think around the minus 30 for all of them is gonna be enough just to make the image a little bit more desaturated, but without affecting the skin tones. So that's all for the hue and saturation. Now we're gonna move down to color grading. Now color grading is one of my favorite tools because it lets you add a color to the shadows, to the midtones, or to the highlights. Now you can also use the global color wheel, which is what we're gonna do right now. And you can find it all the way to the right of the wheels over here. And this one will basically add a color to the entire image, just basically an overlay. So what we're gonna do is just add a warm tone to the entirety of the image. Obviously the saturation right now is a bit extreme, and the hue is gonna be 45, and obviously the saturation is way too high. So in this case, maybe around the 20% is gonna be just enough. And we can see the before and after, and it's just adding that warm tone into the entire image. It's looking very nice. Okay, so the preset is looking very nice. One thing that it's missing is the grain. So we're gonna go down to the effects. Now in effects, basically we want to add nothing yet, we want to add some grain. I'm gonna start off with the quantity or the amount. So I'm just gonna zoom in just a bit to see what we're looking at. Just gonna add a bit of the quantity, around the 29 is gonna be enough. And then the size is just gonna bring it up just to make it a bit more notorious. And then also the roughness, just gonna bring it up around the plus 85 is gonna be just fine. And there we have it before and after, and it's looking very nice. What do you think guys? Uh, we have those shadows that are losing a lot of information, those raised blacks, those orangey skin tones, that general desaturation and that grain. So we're gonna save this preset and then apply it to different photos to see if you need to modify it. And then we're gonna move on to the other variant. So I'm gonna go to the left panel over here, under presets, select the plus sign, create a preset. And remember that white balancing, exposure contrast, we don't want to mark them. and we do want to mark the grain, which is normally unchecked. So we're gonna hit create. So here we have this portrait, which is very underexposed. I shot it at one over 800 in an APS-C sensor camera, which isn't very high. We need uh, just to amp up the ISO for this case. So what I'm gonna do is just apply the preset. As you can see, it's already in the Edelac preset pack. And now, as you can see, exposure and contrast are at zero. And now we're just gonna modify them, just amp it up. And here we have our image and it's looking very nice. Those shadows with a lot of information, faded out blacks, orangey skin tones, it's looking quite nice. How about in this portrait? Let's apply the preset once again, compared to the original. And there we have it, it's very nice. You can see those faded out blacks, those shadows with loss of information, orangey skin tones. It looks good on portraits, but I do recognize that it is a very dramatic style. Now let's create the other variant, the neutral, a bit more contrasty one. Now, to create the other variant, we're gonna use this preset as a basis so we don't have to start from scratch. So we're gonna to go to our first image that we started editing, that we have over here. And what we're gonna do is modify it just to create the other variant. So first of all, we're gonna go down to color grading and we're gonna reset the general color wheel. So we're gonna double click the color wheel to disappear that warm tone. And now our image is a bit more neutral. Then in camera calibration, we don't want orangey skin tone, so we're gonna reset them once again. And then finally, in the tone curve, we can add some contrast. So what I'm gonna do right here is just bring down the shadows just a bit below the diagonal in this case. And now we have a little variant, a bit more contrasty and neutral of the other presets. So we're gonna save it as another one. We're gonna go to the left panel once again, presets and create. Okay, so let's see how these two presets perform and differ from each other in other images. So let's start off with this one. Let's unpop the exposure because it's underexposed. And immediately you can see how this image is starting to fall apart. Look at all that noise 
and the effects that appear, even though this image was shot in very comprehensive values, but it is an APS-C sensor camera, so it has lower dynamic range than a full frame. So here we have Olesia Shatskova, the first one, which is the warm one, and it's looking actually quite nice. Those orangey skin tones, faded out blacks, that those shadows which are losing information and a very nice film grain. And let's see the other version, which I titled the same, but now neutral. And basically it just reduces all that warm tone in the skin and it's a bit more contrast and also that warm tone in the color grain and it's looking very nice. How about in this one where we have a bit more of a colorful environment, let's apply first of all Olesia Shatskova and here we can see it is very warm, it's looking very nice actually, the skin tones are orangey, yellow, nothing completely unnatural and we have that loss of information in the shadow, fit up blacks, it's looking very nice, very film and now let's apply Olesia Shatskova neutral and it's just reducing all that warm tone and just a very nice preset overall. How about this one? Let's apply Olesia Shatskova, uh, the warm one. And there we have it. And it's looking beautiful. Let's apply the other version, a bit more neutral and contrasty. And it also works perfectly. And there you have it guys, my interpretation on Olesia Satskova style is a very beautiful style for portraits and remember that these two presets, I've already added them into the Elag Preset Pack V2 in case you want to check it out, it's linked up here, uh, you can find the link to my shop where you can find it and also you can find my personal preset packs and personal lot packs that I use every single day to edit my photos and videos. So if you can buy anything from my shop, that's the best way you can support me. Also, if not, you can check out the channel membership, maybe it interests you or you can just like the video, share it with a friend and subscribe. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and I'll see you in the next one.